Hello, I've not done a video in a while, so I thought it was time I made a new video and I wasn't sure what to show you this time, so I thought I would just show you what I'm working on at the moment. So I am planning to make, or I have started making, this collar here, which is in the Priscilla Number no. 2 Tatting book, which you can find online for free. And there is a link in the information box below the video, so you can go have a look and download it or print the page that you need. I had made a start here, as you can see, in size 20 thread, but the pattern calls for a size 10 thread, so I thought I should be sensible, really, and I started again in size 10. I don't often work in size 10 thread, um, but I thought it would be better for this collar. So, as you can see, I've made six of the medallions that are in the center of the collar here and we need 11 of them so we, i'm going to start on the next one and show you how it's made so you need one shuttle attached to the ball i'm working as i said in size 10 thread this one is by dmc it's called babylow uh, it's a nice thread i uh, like working with this thread it's nice and smooth and easy to work with so the center of the medallion here, so we're starting with this bit here, has small rings of three picots separated by two stitches and larger rings of seven picots separated by two stitches and chains of three in between. So we're starting with a small ring. So two stitches, one pico, two stitches, one pico, two stitches, one pico, and two more stitches, two, and close the ring. I'm going to get my little mat out here so I can roll on my mat. So finish the little ring, reverse work. and make a chain of three stitches. I've shown how I use this little mat to roll my shuttle instead of having to wind it back with my thumb because I think it's quicker. So three stitches on the chain. I mean, I've shown it in a previous video. I'll put a link to that as well. Three stitches on the chain, reverse work. And now we're making the larger ring of seven picots separated by two stitches. Two stitches, one pico, two stitches, two, two stitches, three, two stitches, four, two stitches, five, two stitches, six, two stitches, seven and two stitches so we are seven picots separated by two stitches and close the ring this reverse work to make the next chain three stitches in the chain one two three Reverse work, the second small ring, two stitches, one, two, a pico, two stitches, a pico, two stitches, a third pico, and two stitches. Close the ring. Reverse work. And three stitches for the chain again. Always make sure you pull this nice and tight so there's no gaps under your rings as much as possible. Two, three, snug my chain, reverse work, and make up oh, the second large ring. Two stitches, one pico, two stitches. Two picots, three stitches, oh sorry, two stitches, three picots, two stitches, four, 
five, six, seven, and two stitches. I'm gonna drop my shuttle and let it unwind itself. It's gone a little bit twisty. Close the ring. Reverse work. And we're making the last chain for this center of the center of the medallion. So it's three stitches to the chain. Two. And we're joining back at the beginning. And in the pattern, it actually says join back. And let me find my sheet. What does it say? Uh, join and sew ends underneath. But I, as much as possible, I like to do things continuously. And I think it's really unnecessary to cut here. So this is the center, as you can see it. We're going to reverse work. And where we need to start for the second round is joining, is with these two picots join here, the, in between the two rings. So instead of cutting and rejoining there, it's really practically invisible. I'm making a join here by pulling this thread through the two picots and passing my shuttle through like this and I'm ready to start the next round. And the next round has chains of 12 going around the small rings and chains of 18 going around the large rings. So we're making 12 stitches, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Oh, and I've got this here, probably that you can see. Um, these are my magic loops, and I will be using them in this uh, design because I don't like sewing ends in. So I'll show you where to insert them at the right point so you can, they're ready to uh, pull your ends in when you finish the medallion. So 12 stitches, and now we're going to join again with the two picots between the next two rings, like this. Let me give it a little tug. Like that. So that's a chain of 12 around the small ring, and now we're going to do a chain of 18 around the larger ring. One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. And again, we join using the two picots, the two lowest, or the last and first picots of the next two rings. And join. And again, 12, a chain of 12 around the next small ring. Two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And we'll join again the two picots, last pico and first pico with the following two rings. Like this. And one more chain of 18. One, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. And join back at the beginning. So these two picots were already joined when we started. So I'm just going back in the same place. Like this. And the next round, we're doing chains again. 16 around the short, uh, the short chain or around the small ring. And 22 around the larger ring. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, and join in between the two chains of the previous round. And around the larger ring is 22 stitches. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, and twenty two. And join between the chains as before and we repeat once more so 16 and 22 I'll see you there Yeah, and uh, and I've completed the last long chain of this round, and we're joining between the chains of the previous round. So that's the third round completed, and the fourth round we are making. Around the small ring, six picots separated by three stitches. And around the larger ring, eight picots separated by three stitches. Okay, so we're ready to make the fourth round. And this is where I'm going to insert my magic loops. You can, of course, sew your ends in, but I am a big fan of magic loops. So this is what I'm going to use. So the first one has to face the knot facing right. and not insert it in the first half stitch half stitch and then i place it behind like this do the second half stitch not too tight and then i'm going to place it like along my core thread and make three stitches two Three. And a 
Pico. One, two, three, and another Pico. I'll pull it out a little bit again. And three more stitches. I'm being generous here. You probably don't need to insert it in that many stitches, but two and three. Oh, missed it. And three. That's really plenty. So I'm going to pull it out a bit and fold it back and carry on with my chain, which has, as we said, six picots separated by three stitches. So we have two made. So now this is the third picot. And three stitches, four, oops, and three stitches, five, and three stitches, and six, and three stitches, two, three, and join between the chains as before. for now and the next chain has eight picots separated by three stitches one two three and pico two three pico Four picots, three stitches, five picots, six picots, three stitches, seven picots. Three stitches and eight pico one two and three stitches so that completes the chain around the larger ring and join between the chains like this and we're going to repeat once more Six picots divided by three stitches here and eight picots divided by three stitches here. I'll see you back at the beginning. Or rather, I'll see you back at the end of the round. No, I said I'd see you at the end of the round, but I have to say I have something to add because we have to not forget to add the other magic loop in the last chain. So I'm here at the last long chain. I'm going to make the first five picots of it, and then we will insert the second magic loop. So that's two picots. Three. Four. Five. Five and the three stitches. Oh. I'll make the pico as well. Okay, so that's the sixth pico. And we're going to take a second magic loop. And this time we want the knot facing left. And place it behind the work. And continue with two more stitches before the next pico. I have a whole video on magic loops. If you want to go and watch it, I'll put a link in the corner of this one if you're interested. Uh, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pico, and three stitches, one, two, 
to you. Three. Pull it out again. And this is the last pico. So that's the eighth pico. And three more stitches. So that's the second one. And then on the last stitch, you want to make the penultimate half stitch not too tight and then move the magic loop out of the way for the last half stitch like this so my chain and join at the beginning in between the two chains of the previous row, like this. And now we don't need the ball anymore, so I'm actually going to cut it. Because for the last round, we only need the shuttle. We are going to be making all the little rings around so you have to make a little ring attached to every single pico of the round you've just made and also what we mustn't forget is we're starting here on the small one so we're going to be doing these and around here and once we get to the making the little rings around this smaller ring on that on the side we need to join here to our main piece so i'm going to join into the next pico just like this and start making the rings so one ring per pico and the rings have three picots separated by two stitches two stitches one pico two stitches one pico two stitches one pico two stitches and close the ring like this and then we join into the next pico and make the next little ring we're going to join it to the previous one so two stitches and join Two stitches, one pico, two stitches, one pico, and two stitches, and close the ring. Join to the next pico and repeat. So basically, repeat all the way around until we get to the second pico on this side Now, I always hesitate in videos like this because I don't know whether you like me to actually video the whole thing or sometimes it seems to me like it's very long just to watch me do, you know, especially when you're repeating something like that, to watch me do everything. So I don't know whether it's better to, you know, go quickly over the repeated part and just, you know, as I said before, join you back where there's something else going on. Or do you like to actually see the whole thing really completely video the whole thing? You'd have to let me know in the comments, please. But for this one, as I'm keeping repeating these small rings, three stitches separated by two picots, I will skip a little bit and see you back when I'm here on the second pico on the other side. Okay, so we're here on the other short side and I'm about to join to the second pico of that short side. And what we want is to join the rings attached to the two center picots because there's six picots on the short side. The rings attached to the two center picots to the rings attached to the two picots to the center two picots the same on uh, 
on your main piece here. Now they can be a little bit hard to count because as you'll see, the rings end up being in between the picots. So you have to try to see what you mean here. There's one ring that's in completely in between, looks like it's not on the chain. So you have to try to visualize which, you know, or, or count to make sure you've got the two center picots, the, sorry, the two center rings on the side. So here I've joined, so that would be, I've joined here to the first picot on this side. So that would be the first ring, second ring. So three and four are these two here. Three and four. So I'm going to join here to the second pico. Oh, sorry. So it's going to be the ring that's attached to the third pico. So I'm going to make now the ring attached to the second pico. Two and join. Two pico. Two, pico, two, like this. So now joining to the third pico. So that's going to be the third ring on this side. And this is the ring that we want to join. But as you can see, it looks a little bit off center, but I have not figured out a better way of counting them. It, it really is actually the third pico on that, sorry, the third ring on that side. So two stitches and join, and two stitches, and now I'm going to have to count again. So that's joined to the, that's the first pico, so that's the first ring, second ring, third ring. So we want to join to the fourth ring on that side. Third ring on this side and fourth on that side. Like this. Or we'll make sure you've got them facing the same way as well. That you're looking at the front of your work on both pieces. Two stitches and a pico. And close the ring. So now we're joining to the fourth pico. So two stitches and join to the previous small ring, two stitches and join to your main piece. So now this is the fourth ring on this short side and this is the th one, two, third ring on your main piece here. And join two stitches, a picot two stitches and close the ring. But the thread keeps getting caught in there. Close the ring. So now we've joined. So we now have seven of them. I have a bit of a head start on you if you decide to make this, but I'm not tatting super fast at the moment because I have a problem with one of my elbows. So I can only do a bit of tatting at a time is difficult. No tatting marathons for me at the moment. I've got to be patient. So you'll have time to catch up if you want to before I get to the next video. So we're continuing now with all the, little, the small rings the same. One ring attached to each pico joining to the previous little ring. So two stitches, a pico. Two stitches, a pico, and two stitches, and close the ring. So I'm going to repeat all the way around. I'm just going to do this long side again, and I'll see you near the end here. Okay, so here we are, back at the last pico. So on this last ring wants to be joined on both sides. So join to the last pico. And we're making the last ring. Oops. Two stitches join to the previous ring. 
two stitches, a picot, and two stitches, and we're going to make a folded join to join here back at the beginning. So we're going to fold the beginning on top like this, and insert your hook from underneath, and then make your join. And then complete as normal. So I'm completing the stitch with the second half, and one more stitch, and that's the ring finished. Now we can close it. Make sure I've not got any of my threads tangled in it. No, it's looking good. And I'm also going to join back and insert my hook from underneath here and join back in the first pico as well. Like this. Because all, cause all the rings are attached like that, so you have to attach your last one as well. Right. So now I'm going to make sure my magic loops out of the way. I'm going to cut the shuttle thread. I'm going to tie them together with a square knot. This. and then use the wonderful magic loops to hide my ends. So one on this side, pass it through the loop, start pulling, make sure it's, it's grabbed it, yes, open the loop and then just pull it through like this and the other side and open the loop pass my thread through it start pulling like this make sure I've grabbed it and then open it here on the other side and pull through That's it. Done. So we now have eight medallions done on the collar. So I hope you might decide to join me in this project. Please let me know if you think you will. Uh, but I'll carry on. And when I'm ready to work on the next round, once I finish all the medallions, so 11 medallions we need to make, then I'll make a new video that shows how to make the next round. But first, I'm going to have to do some work because I've been reading and it's not that easy to understand. So I have to figure out how to make the following rounds. But that's it for this time. I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye bye.